Hello, Matthews Gatos here. In this video, we're going to look at how do we find the equation in vertex form if I'm given the graph or information about the graph. So just to review what the vertex form is, it's a x minus p squared plus q. And to find the equation, I need to know what a, p, and q are. So I leave x and y in general for the equation. So the first thing that you're going to do is look at the vertex, which is p and q and you're going to substitute it straight into the equation. So remember when you put in P and Q, you have to follow the format of the equation. So for example, if P was a negative two, when I put it in here, taking away a negative two is a positive two. So it will change. So pay special attention when you're dealing with P. Now, you always solve for A. This is really important, okay? You're gonna do this in the 20 level and the 30 level. Always solve for A. And the way we solve for A is find any other point, not the vertex, and substitute it in the equation that we have so far with P and Q. You substitute in X and Y and solve for A. We always solve for A. So let's try a question. So in this question here, I want to find the equation of this quadratic function. So first thing I'm going to do is start with my vertex, which is the midpoint of your graph, the point at which it changes direction. And I can see that the vertex happens to be the x-intercept, which means this is a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to plug in p is negative 3 and q is 0. Then I'm going to pick any other point on the graph. Now, it doesn't matter which point you choose, you will get the same A value. I like to choose an A value that has the smaller X and Y coordinates, if possible. So I'm going to choose this one here, which has coordinates of negative 1 and negative 2. But either point will work. So that means my X value is negative 1, my Y value is negative 2. So I'm going to plug in P, Q, X, and Y for the purposes of solving for A. So let's do that. So we have y negative 2 equals a times x negative 1 minus p, which is negative 3, and then plus q, which is 0. So let's tidy this up a little bit and solve for a. So negative 1, take away a negative 3, two negatives make a positive, really becomes negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. And then plus 0, I don't really need to add that on. So negative 2 equals a times 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. And I'll divide both sides by 4 to get negative 2 quarters. And let's put that into lowest terms. I always want your fractions in lowest terms. So negative 2 over 4 in lowest terms is negative 1 half. So what I can do now is plug in my a, p, and q values to come up with my equation. So let me just change colors here so you can see that. So my equation is leave y and x in general. So y is equal to negative a half x minus a negative 3 is really positive 3 squared plus q, which is just 0. So this would be my final equation here. Okay, let's try this one. This might be a good time for you guys to pause the video, try it yourself, and then come back to see if you've done it correctly. So in this question here, I'm going to solve it just like the last one. I'm going to start with identifying my vertex. So my vertex here is two and one, and then I'm going to pick a point. I'm always gonna try and choose the one with the smaller values. So I'm going to use this point here, which has coordinates of one and five. So let's plug in P and Q, X and Y, and I solve for my A value. Always solve for A. So Y equals A times X minus P squared plus Q, which is 1. So 1 take away 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared means negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. And a times 1 is just a plus 1. So I'll just subtract 1 from both sides, and I get an a value of 4. So now that I know p, q, and a, I can put that all together in the format here to figure out my equation. So y equals a x minus p squared 
plus q, which is 1. So this is my equation, keeping x and y in general. Okay, in this one here, we're going to find the equation, not with the graph, but with some information. So I want to find the equation of a quadratic that is congruent to y equals negative 3, x plus 4 squared minus 5, but has been translated 2 units left and 3 units down. So first of all, let's talk about this word congruent, what it means. So congruent means it has the same shape. Okay, so it has the same shape, which means it has the same a. So looking at this here, we'll say that a is negative 3. So congruent means it has the same shape. Now, let's look at the vertex. So the vertex is found by taking the vertex of that graph and then moving it. So first thing we need to do is figure out what this vertex is. So this equation right here has a vertex at negative 4, because horizontal lies, and negative 5, vertical straight up. So let's start right there. So we have our original vertex is at negative 4 and negative 5. We're going to move that vertex two units to the left, 1, 2, and three units down, 1, 2, 3. So this will be my new vertex, and it will have coordinates negative 6 and negative 8. So that means that P is negative 6 and Q is negative 8. So put this into our format here. We have an equation Y equals negative 3 X minus negative 6 all squared minus Q. So Y equals negative 3 X plus 6 all squared minus 8. Now, it would appear that that is enough of an equation. However, I want to go back to the beginning when I said it was congruent. Congruent means the same shape, not necessarily the same orientation. So what that means is that A could be positive or negative. So this question actually has two possible answers. And I would expect to see both in this case. Or Y equals positive 3, x plus 6, all squared, minus 8. Both of those graphs have the same shape. So whether the graph opens up or down doesn't affect the shape. So since we weren't told that it has a max or a min, we need both answers. Okay, in this next example here, I want to do a word problem. So we have a window in the shape of a parabolic archway that has a width of 120 centimeters and a height of 80 centimeters. I want to write an equation that models this shape. So I'm a visual person. I kind of need to see a picture of what that looks like. So there's my parabolic archway. I'm 120 wide and I'm 80 tall. So to come up with the equation, we really need to take this parabola and we need to put it on our Cartesian plane, on our coordinate grid. So where you put the vertex is going to determine what your equation is. Now, if this was a test question, I might see four different places for the vertex. And I would look at all of those questions as being equally valid. My tip to you, however, is going to be to always place the left-hand corner of my graph at the origin. The reason I say this is because if that's where the left-hand corner is, right at the origin, everything is to the right of that, meaning that all my values are positive. So that's my tip for you. If you guys place it, uh, the origin at the vertex or the other side, that's totally fine. I'll look at how you do that question, but this makes it a lot easier. So the way that I've set this up now, we can figure out what the vertex is. So since it was 120 across, that's my x value, this is the halfway point, so it will be 60. And then your q value is the height of the graph, which we already knew was 80. So that's a great little tip of placing the origin at the left-hand corner. The other nice thing is I can use 0 and 0 as one of my points, which makes my calculations a lot easier as well. So the way that I've drawn it, my vertex is at 60 and 80, and I want to solve for my a value. So I have, 
let's go this way here. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it better. Okay, so for this one here, I have y, which is 0, equals a times x, which is 0, minus p, which is 60, squared, plus q, which is 80. So I have 0 equals a times 0 take away 60 is negative 60 plus 80. Okay, so negative 60 squared means negative 60 times negative 60, which is positive 3,600 plus 80. So I will subtract 80 from both sides and then divide both sides by 3,600. So negative 80 over 3,600 equals A. Now, I'm going to use my calculator to help me put that into lowest terms, which is negative 1 over 45. So since I know that A is negative 1 over 45, I can now put it all together in one equation. So negative 1 over 45 times x minus 60 squared plus 80. Okay, we're going to use this equation to solve the next part of the problem. So the next problem part of the problem says, determine the height of the archway 40 centimeters from its outer edge. So there's my equation. I know if I go in 40 centimeters, I don't know exactly where that is approximately, and then I go up, this is what they're asking me. What is the height right there? So that 40 is an x value. So basically it's saying if x is equal to 40, what does y equal? So let's go to our equation, y equals negative 1 over 45, substitute in an x value of 40, and then add 80. So I'm just going to put that into my calculator to figure out what it is. Okay, so the reason that I changed it to a decimal is because if I asked you the height of the archway, you would not tell me 640 over 9 centimeters. You'd say it's about 71.1 centimeters. So for word problems, we like decimals. Okay, now that's one way you can do it, and I think most of us would do it that way, but some of us might see it this way, going in 40 here. What's the y value here? Now, if I go in 40 from the right-hand side, my x value is not 40. My x value is 120 take away 40, which is 80. So you could do it either way because parabolas are symmetrical. So since you can do it either way, let's look what would happen if we put in 80. So if we put in 80 instead, you can see that I get the same value. So hopefully you guys are seeing the value of the vertex form of a parabola. For example, someone could say, thank goodness for the vertex form so I can easily figure out the equation of the parabolic arch that I just served. Well, I don't think anybody would say that. Well, nobody but me except. So I hope this video helped you. This is the end of section 3.1. You can go on and do uh, the textbook questions and my questions, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.